Now we have taken oxalic acid in this conical flask. For titration, we have to add phenolphthalein indicator, two drops. Now this phenolphthalein indicator as we know is colorless in acidic solution and when base is added and in basic solution basically this turns pink. So how to estimate the neutralization point when this solution, this colorless solution will turn pinkish then we can know that the neutralization point has been achieved and our titration is complete. Now let us proceed for titration of oxalic acid with NaOH. So now let us uh, start the titration experiment. Now we have taken the NaOH solution in burette and uh, oxalic acid along with phenolphthalein indicator in the conical flask. Now we will be adding the solution from uh, burette drop wise. Now how to operate this burette? You have to hold this burette by left hand, turn this knob like this slowly and we can see drop wise NaOH comes here and a faint pink color appears and upon stirring this color goes. So the experiment will go on like this. We have to add NaOH drop wise from left hand. We have to um, operate the knob and from the right hand we have to continuously stir this conical flask. Now you are adding NaOH gradually, drop wise. Here we can see we are almost close to the end point since the intensity of the pink color is gradually increasing and here with one single drop we can see we have reached this end point. This end point is marked by this pink color. The pink color shows that the entire oxalic acid has been neutralized with NaOH and from here we have to record the volume of NaOH required. So our titration is complete. Now for estimating the strength of sodium hydroxide, we need to find the volume of sodium hydroxide consumed in neutralizing um, oxalic acid solution. Now the sodium hydroxide was initially in 0 mark and the final uh, volume is comes to around 2.8. So here we have to also consider the lower meniscus of the solution which touches the graduated mark here that is a 2.8. So the volume of NaOH required is 2.8. From normal cal uh, calculation, we know that V1S1 equal to V2S2. Now here the volume of oxalic acid taken was 10 ml. The concentration of oxalic acid was known and the volume of NaOH was also uh, can be observed from this uh, experiment. And finally, we can estimate the concentration of NaOH. Now we will begin the second titration that is standardization of HCl using the previously standard NaOH solution. This HCl prepared has a rough uh, strength of around 0.5 normal. Now the titration process is pretty similar to the previous one. We will pipe it out around 10 ml of HCl. We have to gradually adjust so that the lower meniscus of the solution touches the zero mark. The same concept we used in case of burette. Now we will be transferring this into the conical. After that tap twice. Again we will be adding two drops of phenolphthalein indicator.
and being an acid, that is HCl, this again colorless. And again, we will be titrating this with sodium hydroxide. Now let's begin the second titration part. Uh, we have filled this burette entirely again with sodium hydroxide till zero mark. And let's add this slowly. We'll open this um, uh, knob using left hand and hold the conical in the right hand. Add drop wise and again start this one. We can see a gradual appearance of pink color. What happens actually is that when NaOH is added, when one single drop falls out here, the local concentration of NaOH is very high, which shows this pink color. However, again on mixing, and this is neutralized and the pink color disappears. Now when the pink color persists, we can be sure that there is no H plus ion left which may neutralize the NaOH solution. And as a result, the com solution is completely neutralized or rather excess of OH minus is there and we have to stop this titration when the solution is pink. Now you have to gradually add this drop wise and stir it. And one small thing out here is that if any time uh, you feel that one of the drop has been uh, out there in the side of the conical, inside the conical, you can use double distilled water any time. Okay. And just clean the sides. Please note that if you, you can easily use water during titration, because upon using water, only the volume changes, the concentration may change, but the number of moles of the component remains same. So titration is all about equivalence, reaching the equivalence point, that is number of moles or equivalent present in the solution. So adding water does not change anything in the titration process. We can see the pink color is there. It may be coming within one to two drops. And here. Here, finally, pink color appears. That is, the solution is completely neutralized, or rather, a single, a small amount of uh, alkali is excess in the solution. Now we have to determine the strength of HCl solution again. So we are done with the uh, titration process. The solution has been turned into pink. Let's see the concentration of HCl required. For this, we have to note the volume of NOH that is utilized in this process. Here we can see this is the zero mark, and this is the graduated mark out here where the lower meniscus touches is 8.9. So the volume of NOH required for titrating this HCl is 8.9 ml. Now let's calculate the strength of HCl using V1S1, V2S2 method like the previous way. So we have calculated and seen that the concentration of HCl that has been titrated is 0.635. Again, the concentration which you have prepared 0.5 is not exact. Being a secondary standard, the concentration of HCl that has been determined using titration method is 0.635 normal. This HCl will be used for protonation of the amino acid used for titration. Now let's proceed for the estimation of PI of amino acids. Now for calibration, first we will calibrate it using pH 7 standard buffer. Now this pH 7 standard buffer has been transferred into this beaker and the pH electrode is immersed into this beaker. 
Now, here we can see that the pH is not exactly 7. Rather, the pH is a bit lower than 7. Now, we have to calibrate it in order to reach 7. We will gradually calibrate this uh, solution. It's increasing. Okay, now. Now, we can see it is showing pH 7. That is, the pH electrode has been calibrated with the solution to pH 7. Similarly, we will calibrate it using pH 4 buffer. This one is another buffer, pH 4 standard buffer. We will calibrate it using this one. And after that, we will also calibrate it using pH 9 buffer. That is, pH. this is actually pH 9.2. Now, we will calibrate it using pH 4 and pH 9.2 respectively. Now, let us begin with the PI estimation. For this, we have taken this glycine solution. This is 0.1 molar glycine and we will take around 10 ml of glycine in this beaker. Now, let us pipette out 10 ml glycine. Now, the solution lower meniscus just touch the zero mark. I prepared out 10 ml of glycine. So carefully taking this in this beaker, this 100 ml beaker. Again, tap twice. Now, this will be used for PI estimation. We have taken this glycine solution in the beaker, this 10 ml glycine solution. Now, before beginning this with this experiment, we have to completely protonate this glycine. For this, we have to add HCl solution, the standardized HCl solution. Now, what amount of HCl should we add? The HCl should be sufficient enough to completely protonate the glycine. For this, we have to calculate the number of moles of glycine present here. That is, we have taken 0.1 molar 10 ml glycine. Now we have to we can calculate from V1S1 the, ex, the amount of the moles of glycine present out here. Now we have taken 10 ml of 0.1 molar glycine solution. From this we can calculate the number of moles of glycine present here. We know the concentration of HCl that is standardized in our just uh, previous experiment. The, from this standard HCl we have to add the fixed amount of uh, HCl, the fixed volume of HCl which will make up the total number of moles of HCl equal to the number of moles of glycine present. That will protonate the number of uh, NH2, that is the equal moles of NH2 present in glycine. So, let us start the protonation process and let us add this HCl. So, before beginning with the pH titration method, so what we have to do, we have to uh, just add you know, distilled water. To. So, before beginning, we have to add distilled water to this glycine solution. So, as we know adding water does not basically change the number of moles and uh, it is required since uh, we need to dip this pH electrode completely into the solution. So, we are adding the amount, amount of water that is sufficient enough to immerse the electrode completely into the solution. Now, let us proceed for adding the HCl solution. Now, for calculating the amount of HCl that is required to be added here, now we have to find the number of moles of the amino acid. The number of moles of amino acid is equal to uh, 10 into 0.1, I mean 10 ml of amino acid is required into 0.1 molar. And here we can see the volume of HCl required is equal to in the simple V1S1 V2S2 method is around 1.57 ml. So, it is not the exact one. So, around 1.57 uh, to 1.5 ml of HCl can be added gradually and we can see a lowering in the pH value. And we will start the experiment once we have added this HCl. So, let us add this HCl solution. We have taken this HCl. The amount of HCl to be added, we have seen it is around 1.5 ml. So, we have taken this glycine solution and uh, in a beaker and put it in a magnetic stirrer. We have put a magnetic bar to it. We have to make sure that the bar is completely clean and uh, free of any sort of impurities uh, covered over it. So, let us start with this. So, before that we have to add HCl solution. 
pipette out HCl. We require around uh, 1.5. I am completely making this level up to 0 so that I can just pipette out 1.5 out here. Now we are just slowly adding this one HCl. And once you start the magnetic stirrer, here we can see there is a gradual decrease in the pH value. Now we will slowly go on adding the required amount of HCl. We will be slowly adding this HCl out here and we can see the pH decreases. Here we have added up to 1 ml. One point four and now one point five. However, we can uh, see that the pH is around two point six four. In order to check whether complete protonation has taken place or not, we may add a small amount of we may add a small amount of H plus if required, just a single drop. Here we can see there is no major changes in the pH, it is around 2.6 to 2.5. So from here we can say that it is completely almost protonated and we can carry out with our experiment. Now let us start with this pH metric titration method. To determine the pi, we have to plot pH versus volume of NaOH solution. Now for taking this reading, we have to note the volume and the amount of volume that of NaOH that is added there will be a change in pH, we have to record the change in pH. Now we will be recording simultaneously change in volume and change in pH. However, for recording change in volume it is quite difficult because one time we have to see the pH and the next time we have to jump into the buret and see the volume. In order to minimize such, uh, so this might lead to some error. In order to minimize that error, what we need to do, we have need to count the number of drops. In order to estimate the volume in relation to the drops, we have to note uh, what we have to note down the number of drops corresponding to 1 ml now the number of drops what we have done earlier is that the number of drops corresponding to 1 ml is equal to 20 drops that is 20 drops of NaOH is equal to 1 ml now if we count the number of drops write it down suppose for one drop the change in pH about some x unit we write down the pH value and the number of drops and later on we convert that number of drops into volume so let's start this experiment so before beginning, in the beginning we have to note down this pH that is 1.80, pH 1.80 and number of drops added here is 0. So we write down a number of drops 0 and pH 1.80. Now we add carefully a single drop of NaOH out here and again close it. and we gradually increase this magnetic stirrer. We can see at around one, you know, one drop, we have added one drop, there is no special change in pH value and it remains around 1.8 to 1.81. So it's around 1.81. Now let's add two drops. One drop drop. So the real number of drops out here is 3 because we have added 2 drops now and we can see that there is no significant change in the pH. So let us add another 2 drops.
we can see the pH gradually increases slightly. Now let's add another two drops. And now three drops. Total number of drops comes out to 10, 1.84. So we can see here that the increase in pH is very slow. So what we can do, we can carry out with uh, around two to three drops at a time. Okay, it's around 1.85. Let's add again two drops. One point eight six. Again, two drops. Here we can see when we are adding NaOH, the pH change is very small. That is, the change in pH is not that much. The low change in pH is due to the fact that this region is basically the buffer zone. As we have studied in the theoretical uh, part, as we have seen in the theory classes that this is a buffer zone where the change in pH is very less because as we know the buffer resists the change in pH. Due to buffer zone here the change in pH is very small. Now once this inflection point is reached, here we can see there is a sudden jump in the pH value. So let us go on adding. Now gradually we can see that the pH has achieved around 3.2 to 3.3. So here we, we have to be very careful about the addition of any OH since the inflection uh, 4.2, 4.19. So it has jumped again around 4.19. Again we add one drop. Now here we can see the inflection point around it, it has jumped to. It has jumped around 6.3 to 6.2, so it will get stabilized gradually. So it is around 6.02. Okay, now it has sharply jumped to 8.2 to 8.2. Okay, 8.29. So here we have just crossed the inflection point. So here we can see a sharp jump from pH 6 to pH 8. So the first inflection point, so we have just crossed the first inflection point where there is a sharp change in the pH. So this indicates that the comp uh, in the first inflection point there is a sharp change in the pH value which indicates that the COOH that is which was completely protonated com uh, converted into COO- minus in glycine and which gives another form where only NH3 plus is protonated and COO- minus. I mean the carboxylic, this gives another form of glycine where the NH2 plus is protonated to give NH3 plus and this carboxylate is uh, deprotonated and COO minus that is the carboxylic acid has come to carboxylate group. And again it has reached to a second buffer region where we will see again a gradual or slow rise in the pH value.
So while gra when gradually we are adding NaOH after the first inflection point, when the value of the pH, which is around 9 to 10, the second inflection point occurs. However, what happens is that this inflection point, the change in pH out here is not that sharp like the previous one. So we can't basically distinguish out here just by, uh, we can't actually distinguish out here by just by observing the pH value where the inflection point occurs. For that, we need to plot the graph. Now, one thing uh, it is recommended that kindly add the uh, rate from the kindly add NaOH drop wise one to two drops as recommended. It is recommended to add NaOH one to two drops each and every time. It may take quite a long time for this titration to occur. However, if you add uh, suppose four to five drops at a time, what may happen is that the inflection point you might cross the inflection point. And upon crossing the inflection point, uh, the graph which you will be plotting out there will not be accurate and the proper PI value can't be determined from that graph. It, better, it's, it is better to add NaOH drop wise one to two drops at a time uh, in order to get a proper inflection point from this titration. We will go on adding NaOH till the pH around 12 is reached. Once the pH around 12 has been achieved out here in the pH meter, we will stop this pH meter titration. Now we have almost reached pH 12. We will be slowly adding one, two drops. However, in this region, as we can see, the change in pH is very slow. So, this is completely a buffer region. Again, let's add two drops. So here we can see that the pH is just above 12 or almost 12. Here we'll stop this titration part. And we'll go, now we'll shift to the calculation part where we'll plot pH versus number of uh, drops which will be converted into the volume of NaOH and from there we can calculate the PI. Now we are done with this glycine titration, we'll next move into titration of lysine with NaOH.